Here we have the all-new 2023 Mercedes-Benz EQE 350 Plus SUV. This color is obsidian black metallic, and then we get black MB text interior. The powertrain consists of a rear-mounted electric motor, giving us 288 horsepower, 417 pound-feet of torque. And this one comes in the premium trim level. So as we come around the front end, we do get our high-performance LED headlamps, along with that daytime running bar there great look and just pretty much similar to the EQE sedan in terms of the exterior styling which I like quite a bit and down here we have the 20 inch aluminum wheels with the aero covers there and then it gets your windshield wiper fluid just click that and that opens up we do get passive keyless entry on all four doors so to lock them you can just click that there and then to unlock, you just slide your hand across. And then over here, we have our three-stage heated seat control. We have memory seat control as well. And then our power seat control is all this here. And we get power as well as power thigh support. Power door lock controls are here. We have one-touch automatic up and down windows on all four doors, rear window lock there. Power folding mirrors with a blind spot monitor. And then we can control our power mirrors either side by using that dial there. We get that Burmeister sound system. And then we have a power boot. There's the lumbar support there. And a great looking seat. But I have that seat up front adjusted for someone of my size being six foot three with longer legs. My driving position, so let's go ahead and check out this leg room. So pretty impressive leg room. I have about probably an inch or so between my kneecaps and the back of the seat there. And then probably about two inches of headroom, which is pretty impressive seeing as this one has that panoramic sunroof, which I'll open up in a bit. But I like the seating position here. Pretty comfortable in the back. Rear AC vents are there. Two USB-C charge ports down in there. And then we do get our ambient lighting as well, which you can see underneath the seat. The center seat folds down. Cup holders are here. And then we do have our premium dome lights or map lights for the back. And then we could hang a shirt or so on that hook there. So going to the back of the vehicle here, love how they kept that same EQE styling, but really just made it an SUV. Get that same signature tail light there. LED, quick look underneath the vehicle. And let's go ahead and pop the boot from back here. So tons of storage behind that second row. We do have the netted pocket on the side here. And then storage. And we also have the tire inflator kit as well. And then we can slide this if we want to and have that tray there. But again, the styling of this is very similar to the EQE sedan in a good way. And we get that same charging capability, so up to 170 kilowatts of DC fast charging. And then if you wanna fold the seat down for even more space, you can do this on either side and run longer objects all the way to the front if you want to. And then you just gotta give it a little bit of ump to get it back. And this one actually is not as hard to do as it is in the sedans. It's pretty easy to fold back up. And then to the front passenger seat, we do have the power lumbar controls there. And then we have our memory seat controls and the power seat controls for the passenger side along with that three-stage heated seat. But I wanna give a huge shout out to Mercedes-Benz of Music City for allowing me to review this vehicle. One exit down from the BNA airport here in Nashville. But here's the window sticker and I love that battery warranty for anybody who's an EV enthusiast like myself. You know, the longer the better. 
Sticker's right at 82,640. And then we can get up to 279 miles on a charge according to the EPA. But like I said several times, I love the styling here. And what I also love is just having an EQE in an SUV and still having tons of space. Well, let's hop in the driver's seat here. Sorry, push button starts right there. Leather wrapped steering wheel feels very nice. Not overly padded, but definitely feels more sporty than the other electric Mercedes Benz I've been in. So going over to the screen here, we do get a 12.8 inch OLED display. Very crisp picture. The navigation screen is here and we can type in our destination. So if I type in Red Roof Inn, it'll start showing me the destination before I even finish typing it out. And then I can also go to previous destinations, favorites, destinations that are sent over and then points of interest as well. So I can go to restaurants, tourist attractions, and then of course, EV charging stations, and then it'll pull all those up as well. And there's a quick shortcut for that too, right over here. And I can just click that there. So the system, once you get used to it, it's pretty easy to use and it makes a lot of sense, but there's just so much in this that sometimes you can get lost in the sauce. We have FM radio, a USB port, and then we also have Bluetooth audio, XM, and then we get wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android auto compatibility too. And then I like having certain shortcuts like this, so I can open and close the trunk from right there. And then Bluetooth devices are here. So I can quickly connect whatever or connect my other phones that are already set up here. And then down here we have our dual zone automatic climate control. So I can control the fan speed here, temperature here, set the auto and then climate control or climate menu. I can go in here and decide where the airflow is coming from. And even though everything is on the screen here, it's pretty easy to use and you can get really in depth if you want to. So sync is here, power is here. You have three different modes. So the comfort mode, which is just your regular AC. And then you have two eco modes that really focus on being efficient. So for people like me, I like to do that because I like to maximize on range anywhere possible. But with the auto climate, what I like is most automatic systems, you either get one setting or three settings, but this one gives you five different fan speeds to get you to that temperature. So if you want it to be on full blast to get you to 68 as fast as possible, you can do that. Or if you want it to take its time, you can go all the way to the lowest setting. So again, climate controls, and then here you can actually edit your departure time. So if you always leave the house at 8.30 to go to work, you can make sure the car is warmed up, the heated seat's doing its thing, and then you're comfortable as soon as you get in, you don't have to wait to heat the vehicle up. And then we have our vehicle settings here. So you can go in here and control everything from the blind spot assist to the camera, to your parking. And then you can go to your vehicle settings here. Just so much you can toggle with. And your ambient light, you can control all of that there. Now let's pull the backup camera. So guidelines follow you as you turn the steering wheel, and then you have that 360 degree view as well. And then you also have a front camera as well as curbside view cameras. And then you can even take a, tell the camera to pull up when you're in a certain GPS position. So if you're backing into a parking space and you wanna have the camera up, you can always have that happen when, if you're in a parking garage or something at your apartment after a long day of work. Now down here, we have all of our drive modes. So hit this dynamic. You have eco, comfort, sport, and then you have an individual mode that you can set up. Here's a quick toggle for the camera views. This EQ is to basically go through all of your electric vehicle settings. So you can open the socket flap. You can set up an eco charging. You can look at the battery life. You can set the battery life. And then you can look at the range go to that thing I showed you earlier about charging stations, parking spaces, and then you can even look at your consumption there. And then you have the settings for all of that right in there. And then you can also get to those vehicle settings by hitting that button down there that I showed you earlier. We have a fingerprint sensor if you wanna set that up. This is the power button. You can turn the display off or turn the whole system off, mute button, and then volume. So this is my favorite 
is you can actually just use this and it's very intuitive. It's not annoying or cumbersome. And if you wanna get through the screen, again, pretty easy to do and you can mute from there or from the screen. And down here, we have a nice little stowaway cup holder. Let me get the key out the way. And then you open that up. You get a wireless charging pad back in there. Cup holders here, which you can also remove those. And then two USB-C charge ports. And I like that you can remove these cup holders because if you don't use them, you can just have all that additional space to put your change or whatever. And then center console cubby space. Very nice size in here. Tons of space. And now to my favorite part, we have this panoramic sunroof. And we can just one touch, pull that sunshade back. And then we can go ahead and slide the roof open. It is a process because it's so, <laughs> the roof is so big, it takes forever for the sunshade to go all the way back. And then you had to push the roof back that far. But very nice lighting in here once that's open. But I also like the sunshade doesn't completely block the light out either. So it's not overly dark in here at any given time. And then we have our dome lights here. And then I just love that trim there as well. But over here to the steering wheel, windshield wiper controls are here. Those are the blinkers, speed there. And then you have your rear wiper controls here. And then to the right stock is our shifter. So you just hit the brake, pull down for drive, tap up for neutral, pull all the way up for reverse, press P for park. And then our cruise controls are here. And you can adjust that or you can swipe up if you want to, which I like. And then all of this is for the left side of the gauge cluster. So home button, then you can swipe left, right, and then you get into something and you can swipe up and down if you want to when applicable. And then to the right side, you have your controls that actually for the radio, which I like. So you can scroll through all of your different options. And then a back button there, voice recognition, favorites you can set up, volume controls, Bluetooth controls. And then behind the steering wheel, both of these paddle shifters are to take you from one side to the other for regenerative braking. So you can control how hard, or you can even turn the recuperation all the way off. But I'll show you that on the test drive. And then this is the 12.3 inch screen here, the instrument cluster, which the picture is so nice on these, absolutely stunning. And then we have our headlamp controls down here. We can set all of those. And then our electronic parking brake, pull up to engage, hit the brake, press down to disengage. And then our tilt telescoping steering wheels also power. We can adjust that. Here's our push button start. And finally, Here's our key fob. But next is time we go ahead and take this EQE 350 plus SUV out on the road for a quick test drive. So behind the wheel of the EQE 350 plus SUV, I can definitely tell I'm riding up higher than the EQE sedan. I just drove one a couple of days ago and I'm glad I got to drive these back to back because the sedan I drove had the aromatic suspension and even though the ride is still plush, it feels just a bit more turbulent in here. And I don't know if that has anything to do with things other than the suspension, but I'm assuming that that air suspension really helped the ride quality of that EQE 350 plus, especially with how these drive on the platforms, but still pretty comfortable ride. And I will say this one doesn't have adaptive cruise. And then you also don't have the lane centering either. And I recommend getting that package. I just think it, it makes it worth it in my opinion. But overall driving, I love how this thing drives. It's just, it's an EQE, but it's an SUV. So the space feels just as good if not better and headroom in here is actually a bit better than the 350 plus sedan I drove I can tell that right off the bat 
I only had about half an inch of headroom there. I have about two inches here, I think, even with this roof. But what's great about this and what Mercedes-Benz is known for is just how quiet it is in this cabin. It's very luxurious feeling here. Everything feels nice, everything looks nice. I love the black with the saddle brown accents. So having that on the dash and on the door trim here, just a great overall look. Now the drive, it's very, like I said, the ride is definitely, it's an EV platform. So I can tell that it's not as smooth as a similarly equipped gas powered E-Class would be, but still very plush, even with the MB Tech's interior as opposed to the full on leather. I'm gonna get over here. I'm gonna try the sport mode out. And just like the EQE 350 plus sedan, having that 417 pound feet of torque, it comes in handy when you're coming from a stop there. The acceleration, even with just a single rear mounted motor is fantastic. And then we'll get over and give it a one more punch here. So of course with it being an EV, especially, like I said, you have 288 horsepower, 417 pound-feet of torque. It'll get up there pretty quickly. But you get that 279 miles of range, which is great. And it's more than enough for daily driving. And it's just comfortable, fun to drive, and pretty practical. Pretty similar to the EQE sedan, just rides a little higher, has a little bit more space. And this will bring me to the end of my review of this new 2023 Mercedes-Benz EQE 350 Plus SUV.